newsletter all we know so far david zervos from jeffrey's a global investment banking firm and robert schiller an economist and co-founder of the case schiller index he was awarded the let me just gonna say this in slow motion you're about to speak to robert schiller this man was awarded the nobel prize in economics in 2013 so let's turn the volume up and go straight to robert schiller robert you said weeks ago that American shares are the most expensive in the world compared to corporate earnings. Yet when you said that, the market was raging on. What's going on now? Well, I think the narrative has been that the U.S. stock market is way overpriced. I know that from survey data that I've been collecting. So I think people have been expecting or half expecting a correction. And they're wondering if this is it. Uh, when they saw the big drops last week, they started to think, this is it. That's, that's the, f the full explanation of what's happening. Brendan Greeley, the way you look at this, is this simply just the market was going straight up months and months, there was no correction, people were ignoring volatility, again, betting against volatility when they shouldn't have? I mean, honestly, first off, Stephanie, asking me to talk after Robert Schiller about market I know, euphoria, it's, it's like, it's like <laughs> you give Hendricks the solo and then you bring on Greeley. But um, I think we have to look at stocks. Stocks are not bought in a vacuum, right? Investors are, are looking at baskets of stocks and bonds. And so if we're going to look at stock prices and what's been happening over the last two weeks, we should also look at bond prices. Investors are getting a higher return on bonds recently, specifically U.S. government bonds. They're paying paying more, or we are rather paying more, for the, for the privilege of borrowing money. Now, there's one of two things that could be driving that. One thing is um, there's an anticipation of future inflation, right? So uh, investors are looking at their stocks, they're looking at their bonds, and they're saying, we think that inflation is going to happen in the future. We're willing to, uh, to charge a little bit more to lend you money. The other possibility, however, is we have more news out of the Congressional Budget Office last week that is looking at what it is the Treasury is taking in after the tax cut legislation, and it looks like that also might be driving the price of U.S. debt, right? So we can't just look at stock market euphoria. We also have to look at what's going on in the bond market and the decisions that brokers are, sorry, that traders are making between which of those to hold. Okay, well, David Zervos, let's take a step back because you truly look at the global economy. And for the last year, I have wondered why the market has ignored geopolitical risks. That is one of the reasons we saw the VIX, the fear index, extraordinarily low last year. And I wondered why on earth is it this low when you've got issues in Russia, in North Korea, in the Middle East? Are we now waking up to the fact that, oh, maybe there are problems? You know what, Steph, I actually think the, the issue here is a lot more simple. It's something you and I used to talk about a, a lot in the past, and that's central banks. And Monday, we just got a swearing in of a new chair of the central bank. Jerome Powell took the helm. And actually, it was a catastrophic first day for Jay. Um, I can't think of a worse day to start than Monday. And, um, and, I, and I kind of feel as though the market needs to test out the new Fed chairman, see what he's made of, see if he's got the, the same sort of muscle that, that Alan Greenspan, Ben Bernanke, and Janet Yellen had. Uh, these, these folks did a lot for the markets in times of stress, and, and we don't know a lot about Jay. We hear he, him sort of channeling Janet Yellen or being similar to Janet Yellen, but we don't know. He's a Trump nominee, he's a Republican, he's got a different way of thinking about things. He hasn't been that clear necessarily on his monetary policy views, more on his deregulation views. And that said, we also have uh, a new makeup okay, of the board. Okay, but hold on, David. Yes. David, he takes the job yesterday and we have, an ex and we have a record-breaking market drop. Those two don't seem to be aligned. It's not like Jerome Powell came out of nowhere. No, he didn't come out, out of nowhere, but Janet Yellen, this has been Janet's uh, show for, for the last four years, and people knew what they were getting, and I think markets are looking around and they're seeing ho some higher inflation data, and they're really wondering, how is this Fed going to react to maybe a little tick up in inflation, maybe a little tick up in growth, and will they be more aggressive than a more dovish Fed that we had before? And the typical storyline for a Republican administration is to, to think about them as being a little less dovish, and I think the market wakes up and goes, well, wait a minute, let's just see what these guys are made of. And, and that's what markets do, they test. You know, I, I kinda, I think I wrote, a, I did write a piece today, I was thinking about this all over the weekend and into Monday, and it reminds me of uh, the movie Training Day with, uh, with Denzel Washington 
Washington and Ethan Hawke. You know, you come on the job, it's your first day, and, you know, it's time to get trained. And I think Jay's got some training to do, and the market's going to give him a little training, and that's what we're seeing. And we're going to see what he's made of. Steph, can I jump in here right, with well, David? Let me. Sure. I just want to make one point. If, if this is strictly a central bank reaction, right, there, then we would expect all bond prices to, to move uh, in tandem, right? They would all move together. And one of the things that we've been noticing is that government debt, particularly the yield, the return that we get on uh, U.S. government debt, is moving faster than corporate bonds. That says to me that yes. investors are seeing okay. a difference in bonds and Brendan, corporate debt. Brendan Greeley. I'm, hit, I'm hitting you with a wonk buzzer. You are nerding out, and we're not having that. I no want to go to Robert Schiller. Let's talk about inflation for a moment, because whether we're talking about a weaker dollar, which is good for exports, tight labor markets, which is what we want, tax cuts, which we have told people is going to be great for corporate America, why is inflation bad for investors? Mr. Schiller. <laughs> I'm not sure that it is bad for investors. It seems to me that uh, inflation at this point is moderated to such a, we've got a target inflation of around 2%. It's kind of a slow, steady background variable. It, it accounts for people being confused by the record, so-called record point loss on the Dow. Everything is scaled up. It's part of an illusion that central banks want to create. And I don't think that inflation is the it, you know, I, th I think that it w we're, central banks didn't cause this. This was a fact of overpriced markets and the public thinking they're overpriced and waiting for them for the moment when they think other investors have awakened to that possibility. And so when they see big price drops, this has happened before in history, they, they react to what they think other investors are thinking. They're not thinking about Jerome Powell. They've never even heard of him. And it's okay. a worldwide phenomenon. Then if you are an average uh, investor and, and the president, for example, was selling you the markets over the last year and you started to ride this trend, are those that were riding the trend the ones who are getting chewed up here, Robert? Well, I think, yes, the, the, the people face this dilemma. They generally thought the U.S. market is highly priced, overpriced, and other markets also. But they're afraid to sell out because they will regret missing furtherance of the boom. So they're waiting for a cue to, to get out. This is how many, many people think. And they just, uh, it, it just, uh, we, we saw drops last week. Initially, they weren't that big. But somehow the talk seemed to be suggesting maybe this is it. And uh, people were watching the mood. And on Monday, they decided maybe this is it. And, and so it's that kind of thing. Now, more and more people are being drawn into this because of all the excitement. It's a question of what the next round of people paying attention are thinking. And uh, I don't know what the market is going to do for the rest of today or, uh, or in the near future. It could keep going down, but uh, there could also well, earlier, be entirely not surprising if it made an up, upswing. Well, earlier today, Kevin Hassett of the White House said, while he can't get inside the mind of the market, he did talk about fundamentals in our economy. Let's listen to that. What set off the last couple of days clearly is the very strong economic data, which shows that our analysis of the economic data is really correct, right? But the data are so strong that clearly markets are starting to worry about Fed policy. Growth has headed back towards normal, but normal involves a lot of other things too. And, and I think that what we're seeing is that interest rates seem to be moving back to normal now as well. Okay, then if Hassett is right, and it was good news that set this off, but fear of missing out is what revved up the markets so high, what should people be focused on today? Brendan Greeley? Uh, they should be focused on actually what Kevin Hassett says. He's not wrong. The market fundamentals are still there. In the midst of all that noise in the markets yesterday, we got really good data from purchasing managers. Basically, what this says is all over the world, the people who make real decisions in businesses are very confident that they're going to have things to buy and sell very soon in the future, right? So the actual data about people who make real decisions at real companies looked really good yesterday. So I don't think he's necessarily wrong. And if you're looking for the one one takeaway from somebody who's not involved in markets at all is that the fundamentals look good. The rest of it is side bets on top of that. 
All right, David Zervos, your last point to an administration who has been selling these markets, hanging their hats on the markets for the last year. Are you still feeling bulled up that this is just a correction or this is just a, a regime change? Look, I, I think I'm going to agree with Brendan. I think Kevin is right. There's a lot of there's a lot of good uh, fundamental stories out there. What I really think, Steph, is what I said earlier, that people want to understand what this new Fed is. They've been babied by the Federal Reserve all the way since 2008. They've been coddled and, and brought back from a near-death experience. They've got a new doctor. They don't really know the doctor that well, and they want to understand the doctor better. And I think this strong data is something that's confusing because you just don't know how quickly these guys are going to try to raise rates or be a little bit different than feds in the past and that's where the market's getting confused and i think kevin actually said that he said we're kind of trying to figure out what the fed's going to do here and so this really is i kind of think the balls in jay's court he's got to kind of tell us you know how quick are they going to be how much are they going to get uh, in in the way of this and how much are they going to offset the stimulus that comes from the fiscal side and the deregulation side. And that's what the market really wants to know. And they're, they're really probing that question by pushing, pushing prices pretty hard. Well, one thing that the market...